a life worth living, especially in times of rapid changing, sparking us to be more than survivors of 2020, but rather students diving into the new and unforeseen. Zooming into the problem at hand, we refuse to let this world stop at a standstill where we can no longer stand. Please understand the revolution of education with online learning. It is our duty to charge forth because we are yearning to be contributors to a society that has needs, a planet to save, the poor to feed, facing the fact that we can no longer interact face to face. The faith of our future relies in the way we pace. And many of us have already fast forwarded our skill sets. Teachers are now tech savvy, students, IT techs. See at home parents can now help and collaborate, taking education beyond the screen into the home to resonate. Learning at home has become the hope for humanity. We know all is not lost once there is still some form of connectivity. And that's who we are as lifelong learners, as Generation Z. We have adapted to make education a channel for creativity. It has never been more crucial than now to support each other never suppressing emotions but gathering all the data until online learning is accessible to all until we can restart and reinstall that good feeling of gaining new knowledge the good kind especially online learning has saved 2020 as the year we befriended technology and incorporated it into our lives we have input everything we know into our minds. Classrooms are now virtual with teams we've never seen before. We thank God that we can meet even through recordings for an encore. Education has always been key and online learning opens the door to the potential we as a society have always had in store. It is new, it is safe and it supplies our demands. May online education guide us to a world more advanced. Hello Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to another edition of MOE Conversations. I'm your host Crystal Wilson and I'm delighted to have with me today not just one but both ministers in the Ministry of Education. We have Minister of Education Dr. Nian Gatsby Gali, welcome and Minister in the Ministry of Education Mrs. Lisa Morris Julian. Welcome. And our topic for today path to transformation both ladies with me have worn and continue to wear a number of hats as educators mothers wives and now ministers in the ministry of education we want to dive a little bit our conversation could probably take the form of what has the transformation been like for you all settling in it's been a couple months um what has it been like minister <laughs> oh, well crystal it's been um pretty much a whirlwind Education has been taken by storm by COVID-19. So that, put that in context. So since March, education systems have been reeling all around the world. So we are no different here. And our learners would have had that transformation from face-to-face -to, -face, um, to home based learning immediately once schools closed in March. So the transformation was even beyond us. It started because of the situation with COVID-19 and it has continued. So it's been, um, we came in in August just before our students were supposed to sit their delayed SEA because of course school closed two weeks before the exam. So that of course being a very pivotal exam um, would have had a lot of ramifications and then of course CXC was delayed and CSEC and our CAPE students they were delayed as well so we came in at a time when the transformation um, was happening by force because there's no way the education system could remain the same under the circumstances and so we have been tasked with now putting some, some shape to that transformation with actually you know defining the boundaries of the transformation and looking at how we are going to get there in an organized manner phase by phase and what each phase would comprise so therefore we are now really the organizers of chaos 
that's what I think we look at ourselves Certainly. as. You've had to shelve your hat as mayor of Arima, um, and now mm. you've had the opportunity to settle into your ministry. What has that been like for you? Well, being mayor was definitely easier. <laughs> 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 it was really, as the minister said, a, a, it's like a force of nature. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of a hurricane and no matter what, COVID-19 is coming at us from all sides and Excuse we me. have to adapt, we have to change in our personal lives, with our children and in the Ministry of Education, it's like birthing. We, we're going through a birthing process, mm -hmm. which we are familiar with, but it's still very difficult. But the support that we are getting from the teachers, the parents, the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. I think this is an exciting time. Yes, it happened by force, but it's definitely something that we needed. So change is happening. And I understand that you have responsibility for the early childhood learning. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit of what is happening with that? Well, it's excellent. The minister gave us a task and I think mm -hmm. we are living up to her expectations. You know, ages three to four, that's a difficult stage. Without any social interaction, their parents, they have to play a major role with early childhood right now. And to tell you the truth, I, I suspect the parents are enjoying it more than the children. They send us pictures every day, videos. We're very much aware of the impact that the ministry is having, I think, in a more personal level. Because this is the first time we are seeing videos from every single center, mm -hmm. every single school. We're interacting with them on a daily basis. The radio program, Uncle Matthew, Auntie Mary, it has been fantastic, one hour a day. We started at our civics program, the National Anthem, the Pledge, three to five, and they're adapting very well. And this is when I realized that we'll be okay. Because at that stage, if they're surviving, then everybody else, we could work through this together. I want to take it back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, as I said before, that you're a, a few months uh, now settling into the Ministry of Education. Do you recall your feeling uh, when you were announced as Education Minister by Dr. Rowley? What was that feeling like for you? Um, I took a deep breath, a very deep breath. I would imagine it's quite a portfolio yes. to handle. Yes, because um, we were not informed before. So, um, and, but of course there were the hints that this you know, might be what it would be. And so when it was actually announced, at that time, it was like, okay, this is really happening because, of course, um, Lisa and I would have been, as parents, very aware of the situation that's happening in the education system, the transformation that's taking place, what's happening with the teachers and so on. So it was now, you know, to really understand that you are now in the driver's seat and you now have to make the decisions that have to take us forward, you know, that realization and recognition that we are one day away from SEA that we are heading into a new term, um, understanding that just a couple of days prior, the Prime Minister would have indicated that schools cannot open physically, and therefore it meant that, okay, so now you have to work with um, your, your minister and work with the team at the Ministry of Education to really make this happen and to ensure that what needs to be done is done in the way it should be done and we you know bring everybody on board so it was just all of those things catapulting through your mind at the same time and just making sure you walk straight up onto the podium you know so it was um bracing mrs morris julian <laughs> how was that for you well i didn't know at <laughs> all <laughs> and i was really happy when i realized that my senior minister would be naya and she's always very giving when i was mayor Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> right? She helped me tremendously yeah. with culture and the borough of Arima and she played a big role in building back Arima Carnival. So I felt I was in safe hands and when she told me tomorrow morning, seven o'clock, I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, we're going straight into it then. And it has been quite a ride since then and I enjoy working with her because she has a vision and I appreciate that. And her vision is simply she wants the best. She wants for the nation's children what she wants for her own children. And what more can another mother ask for? Mm -hmm. uh, bringing the conversation back to COVID and, and learning during um, this particular period, Mrs. Morris Julian, how would you say the little ones have received the online platforms or whatever platforms that have been made available to them? I can speak from 
my nieces, nephews, my children, from what I'm seeing, it's difficult. It's difficult on the teachers, it's difficult on the children, but they're adapting. They're doing extremely well. Because I had a nephew, he had some issues with reading. Now he's reading very well, simply because he has more time at home. He's pulling up the YouTube channels. He's figuring out how to navigate the World Wide Web by himself, with his mother, of course, keeping a watchful eye. And I realized that we needed more of this a long time before. We needed more technology. So this force that propelled us into this particular, it's working for the good. From in all things, good will come out in the end. Uh, Minister, what would you, how would you describe term one? In a nutshell, if you had to, to zero in on any particular, is there any challenge or are there any significant benefits to term one? How would you describe term one, especially during times of COVID? In one word, I would say challenging. It has been difficult because everyone was preparing for a blended return to school in September. And then two weeks before that time, the Prime Minister would, would have had to announce, based on the trajectory of the COVID-19 um, pandemic in Trinidad and Tobago, that we could not get back to school. So that being the case, immediately everyone had to backpedal. Parents who were expecting their children to go back out, teachers who were preparing for that type of arrangement, even within the ministry and the administration of school, all of that had to now be looked at set differently. So challenging is the word that I would use because all of us have had to adjust very quickly and to make the best of it for our children. It is not perfect. It is not perfect and I want to make that very clear at the level of the ministry. We know it's not perfect. We know that teachers are having difficulty. We know that our students are fatigued having to get online. We understand all of that and uh, it doesn't make our task any easier because this is the best we can offer our children at this time. And we are both mothers. We would have both seen our children home since March. And under we understand what that means. If you have a new reader, it means that that child with no drive from a teacher could simply regress into not reading. When you have children, learning is, is like a steep hill you're riding a bicycle up. And so anytime you stop, or you go too slow, it goes backwards. So our children being out of school suddenly, the chance of regression is very, very strong. And then that discipline that our children get from being in school is socialization. They escape for some from the home situation, all of that. So there's a lot tied up into what happened in term one and what was not able to happen. We understand the challenge. We understand that many of our children are ready to go back to school. But some children have done very well in this situation. Some who may have had challenges in the school environment are happy now to be online. We are looking at a rise at homeschooling. There are some parents who said, you know what, um, we could do this. Our children have been home. We never considered homeschooling, but now having to do this, we can do homeschooling. So you have that. You have children who were on the brink and now will not return to school. You have children who may be in terminal exam classes, say upper six, and who would say at this point, I don't have to return to school. So it's been challenging. It's been eye-opening. It has um, revealed a lot of the problems we have in the system that existed before, but are in stark reality now. And um, so in a word, yes. As a mother of three, and I have two primary school aged ch children, mm -hmm. I can certainly relate to the challenges that you all have mentioned. What is the ministry or how is the ministry planning on helping children mentally? My, my children have mentioned to me, mommy, it feels like the 82nd of November. They're no longer aware <laughs> of what day it is, you know, mm -hmm. what period they're living in. How is the ministry handling children and mental health? So our last program would have dealt with that. We would have spoken to um, some educational psychologists as well. We would have spoken to the Student Support Services Division because that division is still available for our students. So what they are doing now is that they have done training, getting the students online with the counseling and that approach. So they have been doing that. So what they have indicated, however, is that there has not been a sudden spike in the number of students asking for support. You may have different students coming forward for support, but 
they have found that students have simply moved their socialization online to the extent that they are not overwhelmed by the situation. However, there are some students who are desperately will, um, ready to get back to school. Some students who enjoy that socialization, some students who simply need the stronger teacher intervention to be able to, to learn well. So the Student Support Services Division, those, those services are still available. The guidance counselors, the school social um, work officers, they are still available to our students and they are interacting online. So in that way, the ministry is ensuring that the same services that were available to our students before are available now. Of course, the teachers can recommend the students, um, parents can also recommend students to have that interaction with the guidance counselor. So if there are students in need of that, we want to urge parents and teachers and principals, um, the services still are available, and so parents can reach out to ensure that their children are well supported during this time. And of course, for teachers who also need that, and we had someone from the EAP um, program teachers, are, they also have that service available to them and from what we are gathering, they have been accessing that service a lot more to be able to transition and to adjust themselves in terms of mental health and acceptance with the difference in the circumstances now. So EAP is available for the teachers and our school support, student support is available for our children. Minister Morris Julian, the little ones, how, what are the platforms, sorry, that the ministry um, has been using to reach the little ones? Well, we spoke about the radio already, but we also have a newsletter that comes every Sunday on The Guardian. And parents love it. They love the activity pack, I think. They rush, it. The Guardian is always sold out in my area every morning when I go for my papers. Mm -hmm. And the activity pack is not just for ECCE, it's also doing first year and second year at primary school level. So a parent gets tangible proof okay this is where we should be this is what we're working on for the next week and like I said I suspect they enjoy it a lot more than the children what would you say are other challenges that are being encountered during this particular time COVID is one of them mm -hmm. um, and online learning poses some challenges are there any other challenges and what how are those being addressed sorry by the ministry well of course the primary challenge is getting every child online um, no child left behind in this time means no child left offline because the printed packages are working for quite a number of schools and children and they are accessing them and they're returning them and that is working but the best replacement for face-to-face -face is the online platform and uh, when children cannot access it of course they would have more of a difficulty and parents as well so that is the primary challenge at this time and of course we are very grateful for the adopt school program where corporate Trinidad and Tobago has come forward, pledged more than 20,000 devices. Of course, another challenge presents itself there because the supply is very, very compromised based on the global demand. And so the devices have been coming in slowly but surely and the students are getting access to it. From the government side, we are also procuring 20,000 laptops because we realize that a lot of the donations are coming in the form of tablets some with keyboards, some without, and we want, we need our children to practice typing. They have to be versatile with typing. Some territories of the region, they have already started e-testing for CXE. So CSEC students are already doing exams on, online. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have not taken that step, but that is where we have to get to. Therefore, the facility of our students with using the computer to transfer their, their thoughts straight into the typing, we need that to be um, really developed. And so the challenge would be getting devices to our students. The challenge would be ensuring that each student has the opportunity to practice their typing skills. And of course, at this time, because we have so many different things coming up and so many different areas that are going to be different, another challenge would be getting all of our stakeholders on board. Because we've had to make a lot of changes very quickly and so there isn't extended time for consultation on some of these matters it's really a matter of this is what we need to do this is how we intend to do it what are your thoughts on this matter um, how can you inform that decision making process and I must say that I want to thank our stakeholders as well the principals the teachers um, tutor 
with the parent associations, for the, the national boards and so on, for understanding the need for urgency and for really responding in that regard and allowing us to make these decisions with their input, with their paradigm, because it's important for us as we get buy-in so that our students can be supported by all of the different paradigms that are, that are available to us so that we make the best decisions. So many challenges, you know, getting stakeholders on board, getting devices to our children, even getting devices into the country. These are all challenges we face at this time. Minister Morris Julian, in terms of screen time and the little ones, um, I see the challenges with my own and their older children, but the, the younger children, how does the ministry encourage um, their timing in terms of their learning period and how much time they spend online? Well, the maximum time recommended by experts is one hour. Mm -hmm. So they have that one hour, but again, that is why we came up with the radio program and the radio program is also an hour. So they're getting all what they would usually do in a school day, but in a age appropriate manner. The screen time is something we all as parents, we have concerns about and we have to be aware. But at that particular age, one hour, and I have a toddler and I can tell you, he enjoys his screen time a little too much. <laughs> But we are now doing the radio program with him and he's answering Uncle Matthew and Auntie Mary. He's pausing, he's standing up for the national anthem. And that is what we have to do. We have to show them examples and let them learn from doing it ourselves. So. Teachers are not to be left out. Mm. How have they been faring? What are the reports that you all have been getting? How have they settled? Are they settled? Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress. Um, I'm a certified online lecturer and so I understand how difficult the transition is and I would have chosen to undergo that training and therefore I would have gone through the rigor of it understanding that I put myself through that and therefore come out at the end with my certification. Teachers did not choose for this to happen but because of the situation they have had to take the mantle and run with it. So it has been difficult for teachers, of course, it would be so with varying levels because you know teachers, some teachers were integrating online platforms from even before, some were not. So there would be a varying level of familiarity with online systems and therefore facility. Um, the ministry has been offering training programs from since March and teachers, it's been oversubscribed because teachers are reaching out and really taking and grasping the opportunity to learn. So quite a lot of them have been doing that and we've been offering different types of, of um, training and they have been accessing it. However, it remains a challenge and it will be so because they are learning while doing and that's always more difficult. Um, but I must say that the teachers in general have been really doing a good job and now they are settling in a lot more because it takes some time to understand how much, how long, um, yeah, and, and also they have been dealing with parents who are now a lot more involved in their children's education. The expectations of parents would also be different. Um, some parents may not be trained teachers either and therefore they don't fully understand um, what is involved and they may expect too much. Some parents may expect too little. Um, up to this morning, a parent messaged me and was asking me how many Zoom classes should a teacher have every week? And my response to them was, that would vary in so many ways by the teacher, by the subject, by the level. There's so many things that would, you know, impact how a teacher teaches in the online environment. And it, it's, parents also have to get accustomed to that. Teachers have had to get accustomed to that. We've spoken to some teachers and they have indicated that when they now started, it was very difficult. But having gone through it for a couple months, they are now a lot more at ease. The students are a lot more at ease as well. So it is a transition. Teachers have been doing, um, by and large, all they can to adjust. And I think it's a lot easier now, which is not to say that it is not still challenging. SEE. The date has been announced. Mm -hmm. My daughter is one of them. Uh -huh. I can tell you that I have high levels of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, any plans in terms of the children and how we are supposed to prepare them and, and, and get them ready for this period? Well, what we have done for SEA 
um, with the input of the stakeholders is that we have reduced the number of items on the paper and reduced the number of um, areas being examined so that they will have the same time, same format, so that, that stays, so that's not a variable. We've pushed the date back to June because it was supposed to be in March. Mm -hmm. So we've given more time. We have reduced the number of examinable areas, reduced the number of actual items on the paper um, and left the time the same. So that what we have in effect done is catered for the fact that this bunch would have had a difficult time and we have already announced the date. And the reason for that is so that everyone gets now to prepare for that time. So it's no longer the uncertainty. This time is uncertain. We can't say when we're going back out to school, even for the SES students that we really want to say that for. But we are trying to introduce as much certainty into the uncertainty as we possibly can. So by putting out what is to be examined, putting out what the date will be, um, explaining that the format will not change, we've even, even gone so far as to say this is a type of writing that will be examined because you know there was a choice in terms of the essay writing. So we've said this is the type you're going to get, this is what we're going to do so that you can prepare because we understand the challenges. And of course, once again, if we can get our students to come back out, then that would be what we would really want so that their teachers can work with them and on a face-to-face -face basis, which will give them the best chance at the success at the SEA. So, I mean, I understand, you <laughs> can both understand that level of anxiety for SEA parents. So we are doing the best we can at the level of the ministry to at least provide a platform for some certainty so that we can, we can have clear targets to work towards and um, certainly we do look forward to getting our standard files back out to school as quickly as possible and that all depends on all of us here. Schools are approaching term two and fast approaching term two. Any word for your stakeholders, parents, children as we are about to head into term two? I think I just want to say to everyone to the country because education is everyone's business that we understand and relate to the anxiety and the tension that parents are feeling, and uh, not just parents, but those who are also engaged in industry around the school system. So we have the school feeding persons, the, the ones who drive the school maxis. There are a lot of, there's a lot of industry, and so we relate to that, and we are doing our best, given the circumstances, to make provisions for everyone to return to some level of normalcy, not the where we were before, but certainly on a phase basis, we are working towards that. And we are working as hard as we can to ensure that things are arranged for our students. So be comforted in the knowledge that at the level of the Ministry of Education, both ministers are doing our best to put the policies in place to be able to bring our system back to some level of normalcy. And I want to take the opportunity as well, even as I say, have a responsible Christmas, to wish everyone a wonderful Christmas season. It's been a very difficult year, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to our Christmas time. Enjoy it with your family, enjoy it responsibly, and let's look forward to what we pray will be a less challenging 2021. Minister Morris Julian, any closing remarks? I just want to repeat what my minister said. 2021 should be better. We pray. Thank you, ladies, so much. And all the best to you and your families. And Merry Christmas as well. And to you. Thank you. And that's it for another edition of MOE Conversations. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Crystal Wilson.